So that was a fucking lie. So it turns out that Fanor and Valor aren't really on the best of terms, and Valor tell both Fanor and Sad Feedway to go to the fortress of Formatos where they're exiled. And then the Valar put Melkor on trial because he is he was captured in the War of the Second Elves. And they're like, yeah, so he's basically the reason we have problems in the world. And then Manway's brother's like, yeah, I know. Let's free him. And uh, yeah, I don't know why you would free that, li the literal embodiment of evil. You could have killed him right there. Everything, everything would have been solved, everything would have been fine, but didn't. So Melkor travels to the southern part of Amman called Avatar, where this big ass spider called the Ungoliant lives. And none of the Valar just seemed to care that there was big ass spiders that lived close to them. So anyway, on an ominous day of festivities, Melkor and the Ungoliant snuck away to, to the two trees, and the big spider ate the light out of the two trees and killed them for the most part. And then they ran to the place called El Karakse, which is a land bridge between Middle Earth and Amman. Then, when they reached the edge of the land bridge, the Angolian tried to kill Melkor, and then he let out a really, really big scream of, "Ow!" And then all the Valar Rukar emptied out of his pits of Angband, which is his other fortress, by the way, and assisted him in driving the Angolian away. And the Angolian went farther south into Middle Earth, and that's how we have spiders in Middle Earth. So what are the Valar Rukar? The Valarukar are the Polrocks, they're the fiery demons. They're also Maiar. Uh, yeah, they corrupted. Yeah, so, but we're not going to use the term Balrog, because the term Balrog is insensitive. It was a slur made by the Sindarian elves. And to use a politically correct term, we will always use the term Valarukar. So, since the speed of light is really, really fucking fast, it didn't take a genius to realize, dude, the trees went out. And so the original plan to replace the light of trees was to get the Silmarils again, and, you know, use the leftover light from them, and recreate, you know, the light of the trees, obviously. The Fanor wasn't gave, gonna give those up, but then he was like, yeah, I'll get them. But when he reached his home of Formenos, his problems only got worse. Oh shit! The silver rolls are gone! No! Yeah, so it turns out that Melkor killed his father, Fenway, and took the silver rolls too. So, Fanor renamed Melkor Morgoth, so Melkor is always referred to as Morgoth from, you know, now on to the end of the story, even though they're the same character. And then he tells all his son, Alright boys, we're taking a blood oath. We're gonna get those Silmarils back at all cost. And this is the Oath of Fanor, and it basically just destroys every character throughout the Silmarillion. So it turns out the rest of Elder don't actually give a shit about the Silmarils and Fanor's affairs, but he convinces them anyway to go to Middle Earth with them. And the host of the Noldor is split into three groups. There's Team Fanor, the best team, obviously, Team Fingolfin, and Team Finarfin. So the best team, Team Feanor, reaches Alqualande, the city of the Teleri Elves. And they're like, hey, can we use your swan boat so we can sail back to Middle Earth and uh, get the Silmarils and stuff? And the Teleri are like, no. And then Noldor are like, if you don't give us your fucking boats right now, we're gonna kill you all. And the Teleri are like, not buying it. And then they kill a bunch of Teleri Elves. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sam, and welcome to Fanor Did Nothing Wrong, the Arda-inspired game show where the answer is always no. Our contestant today is Shane, son of Jeff, from Minas Ethel. How are you doing today, Shane? I'm fine, Sam. How are you? Doing pretty fantastic myself. You ready to play Fanor Did Nothing Wrong? No, Sam, I am not. Well, fuck you. First question. First Kinslaying at Aqualande and dooming the Noldor in the process. Did Fanor do anything wrong? Yeah, looks like he did everything wrong to me. It's <laughs> a good answer. I'm just going to say it's incorrect. Really, the Teleri shouldn't have given up their boats. They should have. They weren't leaving Amon anyway. That was stupid of the Teleri to go just get slaughtered like that. What fucking losers are they? Really, what Ole should have done is work out a sick deal with Fanor. It's like, hey, Fanor, I'll let you use my boats to go back to Middle Earth. Only if you give me like some sick diamonds or something. Because you know why? Fanor can do that. So the Teleri were stupid. 
It's their fault, not the Noldors. I mean, of course. Everybody knows that. So, the first thing Team Fanor did when they arrived in Middle-earth was burn all the boats they took to Middle-earth. So they couldn't go back and take the rest of their Noldor with them and just abandon them. Next question, Shane. Burning boats at Lamoth and abandoning his fellow Noldor to crossing the icy path of Helcaraxe. Did Fanor do anything wrong? Now I'm going to try my luck again. I have 50-50 chance. I'm going to say yes. Mmm, sorry, that's incorrect. See, Fanor screams efficiency. Morgoth has been weakened from the first battle of Beleriand, and if Fanor needs to go and kill him and take the Silmarils, his chance is now. Okay, he's not going to wait for the other Noldor and like sail back and forth 17 times. He's got he's to get all that shit, dude. He has to burn the boats. He has to go now. He can't wait any, anymore. I mean, you're right. So, like I said, Team Fingolfin was stuck on the land bridge of Helcaraxe, but right before they got there, they were greeted by Mandos, the god of the dead, and he was like, yeah, Noldor, you kind of fucked up. We're going to curse you the rest of your lives. Have fun. Yeah, so a lot of the elves uh, frozen died on the way down to Middle-earth, and Team Fingolfin uh, just went back to Tyrion because they were bored, and they got pardoned of all their crimes. Right after the initial boat burning in Lamoth, which is the area they landed in, uh, Fanor's group immediately got down to business to defeat the orcs. And then they got pretty excited and were like, we should bull the Angband right now because we killed so many orcs. Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm out of the gates of Angband with my friend Fanor and everything, just doing a quick little vlog. Um, Corbin, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, say hi to my uh, subscribers. We gotta get the Silmarils, dude. Oh, dude, we're too weak for them anyways. We won't That's make nonsense. it. That's nonsense. Let's go. Oh, dude, we're fine. All right, like and subscribe. See you guys below in the comments. <laughs> All right, it's time for our third question of the night. Pushing forward into Engband and getting slaughtered by seven Balrogs. Did Fanor do anything wrong? I'm gonna change it up a bit and say no way. The answer is no. The answer indeed is yes. Mm, sorry, that's not true. See, this may not have been the best decision, but you gotta think about it. Fanor was born in Amon after the war for the sake of the elves. So he has no idea what the Valar Rukar look like because, you know, they're in that war. So, yes, he really, he didn't know anything. He didn't know any better. So in that case, he did nothing wrong. Okay, I don't believe you, but okay. When Team Figolfin reached Beleriand uh, after crossing the land bridge, they were also greeted by a shit ton of orcs. They also dealt with them pretty handily as well. But Figolfin was like, yeah, we're not gonna go to Angbank. Why yet? And then he settled down and created a bunch of different kingdoms within the subcontinent of Beleriand. So back in Valinor, Valor was like, it's dark, I can't see. And, but it turns out there was actually a little bit, a little bit of light left within the two trees. And Varda used that to create the sun and the moon to actually light the sky. And those could not be destroyed. So back to the Noldor, the interesting stuff. Um, they began rebuilding their lives in Beleriand, but Morgoth was like, he can't do that, and he sent a shit ton of orcs after them. But it turns out this time they were prepared, and they cut through the orcs like butter, without any help from the bitchy Sindar elves who already lived there anyway. So this started Dagor Aglareb, or the Glorious Battle, and also started the long-ass siege of Engban, where Morgoth's second fortress was held under siege for about 400 years. Alright, so now we're going to slow down a bit and just discuss where all the different, you know, factions of elves, dwarves, and Melkor also is in Beleriand, which is the subcontinent of Middle-earth, and the rest of the story is going to take place in this subcontinent. So, north of all this crap, we have the Fortress of Engband, which is one of Morgoth's fortresses, and then Utumno, which is way the fuck that way, and we never talk about it ever again. It's, it's never discussed. Okay, so that's where the bad people are, okay? And so, in the Blue Mountains over here, the eastern part of Beleriand, we have the suburban cities of Belagros, Belagost and Nogrod. And yeah, they exist. So over here we have Heathlum and Dorlomen. So that's where Fingolfin lives, the current High King of all the Norlor. And that's where his son Fingon lives. So over in this area, it's not, hasn't quite been established yet, but it will be soon, is the King of Nargorthron, where Finrod lives. Over here is Osiriand, and that's where some most of the Lyquendi elves will live. 
in this area over here, this straight line, it's pretty much all the we're seven sons of Feanor live in different spots. So Maglor and Majros, um, then there's Amrod and Amras, Kelogorm and Kurufin, and then Karanthir's over here somewhere. Here is Doriath, where Thingol lives. Then over here is an area called Tolsirion, where Orodreth lives. And then this is an area called Dothonian, where Agnor and Angron live, which are the sons of Finarfin. And over here is an area called Nevras, and there's a city called Vinyamar there, where Turgon lives. He's also another king of, or son of Fingolvin. Then one day, Ulmo, who is not Elmo, Ulmo with you, is the who's the god of the water, tells Turgon, hey, there's this really cool area called the Valley of Tumblad, and right over here, you should build a city there. And then he does. And that's how Gondolin became a thing. And yeah. So now that the sun and moon also exist, it's time for humans to start existing in the world as well. So all humans in Arda awaken in this area called Hildorian, and there's like three main groups that all immigrate to Beleriand. There's the House of Bear, House of Marok, and House of Hador. And uh, yeah, they exist. Also, the Eastilians start to exist at this time because Melkor finds them first and uh, yeah, corrupts them. And that's why Eastilians exist. Well, it's been about 400 years. Let's check how the Siege Ang Band is doing. Fantastic. So the siege fell apart and it started Dagger of Ragalak, the Battle of Sudden Flame. And there's like massive ruptures, rules of fire, bad shit, bad, bad. People get murdered and crap. And uh, also the first of the Uruluki was finally matured, Glaurong. Although he was revealed earlier because reasons, uh, this time he was actually fully ready to kick some major ass. And as he did kick, he literally just slaughtered a bunch of people and breathed fire on them because Glaurong is sick. Like, yeah, he being the first dragon, he didn't actually have wings, but he didn't need wings when he could literally like command all of Morgoth's forces, have like thick hide, and also have Jedi mind tricks that we'll find out about later. So in the wake of the marring of Beleriand, Fingolf and the High King of Noldor was like, I don't like this. And then he rode to Engband alone for some reason to challenge Morgoth in single combat, because you know what? Morgoth actually sucks at single combat, and this is the only time Morgoth came out of his fortress to battle people. So, in the duel, Fingolf was never going to win, come on, it's, it's an elf versus a literal god. But, Fingolf, with his sword Ringle, wounds Morgoth several times, even stabbing him in the foot with his final breath. So, yeah, after that duel, the fan, the... Noldor kind of screwed right now, and Middle-earth is never going to be the same. 